welcome to Friday Nights with Emma and Link. Now he's becoming a regular fixture. He loves his Friday nights. Oh, he's going to go climb on Mikey. That's good. Hope everybody's okay. Stay warm. What a week, eh? Um, we'll give everybody just a minute to um, to join. Give us a thumbs up. A little heart. Yeah, if the camera's moving, it's because Link is knocking it. Say hello, Link. Yes, you little boy. Everybody's got their drink. Cheers. Mm, need that from a Friday night. I'm just going to continue doing a little bit of sewing and I'll explain it while we're waiting for everybody to join. Find out what's that bit that I was doing. There, there are people here, but oh, here they, uh, here they go. Okay. Joan is watching. Oh, John, Joan. 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 Hi, Joan. Annette. Hi, Annette. Hi. Diamond. Hi, Shirley. Valerie. Hi, Valerie. Kate. Hi, Kate. I think you have to move. Gail. Hi, Gail. Diana. Hi, Diana. Christine. Hi, Christine. Lorna. Hi, Lorna. Susan. Hi, Susan. Beverly. Hi, Beverly. Carol. Hi, Carol. Anne. Hi, Anne. Sharon. Hi, Sharon. Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. Belinda. Linda? Belinda. Belinda. Hi, Belinda. Lori. Hi, Lori. Sandy. Hi, Sandy. Ross. Hi, Ross. Jackie. Hi, Jackie. Judy. Hi, Judy. Judith. Oh, Judith. Judy, Hi, Judy. Judy and Judith. Ju Judy. Judy and Judith. Hi, Judy and Judith. Barbara. Hi, Barbara. Terry. Hi, Terry. Dawn. Hi, Dawn. Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Not your Sarah. Not my Sarah. Oh, Sarah Wells. Sarah. Sarah Wells. Christina Lynn. Sarah. Lynn. Hi, Lynn. Mandy. Hi, Mandy. I'll show you what I'm doing. Your Sarah now. Ah, hello, Sarah. Jane. Hi, Jane. Deborah. Hi, Deborah. This little bit. Francis. Oh, hi, Francis. A little bit of gorilla sewing, a little bit of an experiment on this little bit. We'll see how it turns out when I turn it around. Lorraine from Kent. Oh, hi, Lorraine from Kent. And Sandra from Glasgow. Oh, hi, Sandra from Glasgow. Diane. Hi, Diane. Oh, Sandra from Glasgow. Yes. Your mat is in the mail. Sorry that it took so long, but it's on its way to you with a little extra gift for being so patient. So yeah, so that you'll have that next week. Beverly asks, is this your quilted coat? Yes, it is. It is, it is. And I just, I started doing it this week. And I'll show you. I'm just going to move this out of the way because I'm, I don't know if I'll be doing any more sewing, but we'll see. Just to get it out of the way. Okay. So, I started to do one side. And I'll show you why that was a bit gorilla. We'll see. I, mm, we'll, mm, I might have to redo that corner. So I wanted this piece of fabric to be one piece, but I wanted this panel to cut into it. So I thought I would try and be clever and do kind of a Y seam, but it hasn't really worked in the corner. I've got some puckers, so I'm going to have to redo that bit. But other than that, I think if I can just fix that corner, pull it out a little bit. I think that will work. So, Diana says you've done your nails. I did. I did them. I did them. I'm actually amazed at how they came out, but don't worry, Sarah, your job is definitely safe because it was a pain. So it is a make do and mend nail session until lockdown is over. But yeah. <laughs> Locked, yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> Lorraine says our turn tomorrow for snow down southeast. Oh, not fun. We had that Thursday, yesterday we had snow. And a little bit left on the grass, but thankfully not on the road. But. Jackie says, I finished the binding and I love it. Thank oh, you yay. for your free motion quilting. Oh, you're welcome. You'd have to put pictures up because it is, this fabric that Jackie had from Belgium is gorgeous. It's, it's similar to the Dutch houses, but it's all over. It's really nice. Diana says, love them. And Kath is watching from Hampshire. Hi, Kath. 
from Hampshire. And Beverly says hello to Link. <laughs> yeah, he's here. So this is my first bit that I've kind of started winging it with this this week. So I'll show you what I've done. Again, this is the pattern, and this is the one that I'm making. And um, because I want to be able to reuse a pattern, which I've never done before, but I thought I need to start getting into the habit of tracing them rather than cutting into them and ruining them. Laurie says it was sunny in Suffolk this morning, but oh. dull end of day. Oh. And Sandra from Glasgow says, received your email. Look forward to the map. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're, you will love it. You will love it. I promise. So this is my pattern pieces and what I used, so actually I kind of profited, Michael bought something on Amazon, I don't even know why he bought it for, but apparently it was the wrong thing, but it worked out for me, so it's a caterer's pack of baking parchment, there's like 75 metres on this and it's quite wide. Oh, I might be able to tell you how many inches it is. It is 18 inches wide. And it's the perfect tracer because you can see right through it. But it's it's a nice, it's not very, um, it's not like tissue paper. And you can see really well through it. So I was quite shocked about that. The only downside of it was for some of these pieces, this one I didn't necessarily have do this with or maybe I did actually the sleeve because it's a little bit wider than 18 inches I had to um, stick two pieces together but because it's non-stick parchment the sellotape doesn't really I mean it comes off really easily so you have to be I mean literally it's barely stuck on there so you do have to be careful that your pieces don't come unstuck but otherwise and I don't even know do you remember how much that was I think I think it was like five or six quid. Really? Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. So Amazon. It's, a few, it's been a few years ago. It has been. Well, it's been sitting in our cupboard, and I remember like, oh, I know what I can use. So it came in handy. So I would look up that catering packs of baking parchment. Which I think is slightly different than baking paper. Um. I don't know. It's definitely non-stick. I think what you were looking for was probably freezer paper. Did you want it to stick to something? No? I don't no. know. Okay, anyway. H Hillary is watching. Oh, hi, Hillary. No, I, so, I bought it for my wet palette. Oh, okay, yeah. He bought it to put paints on when he paints his miniatures. Um, yeah, but I was quite excited about that. So I've got a Japanese pattern book that I am going to be dipping into because I've been waiting for something to trace them out on. And now I know. So, I've got my sleeve. Um, the sleeve is I don't think it's a mirror it's not a mirror image so when you cut them out you have to make sure that you do one this way and then flip it over and do one that way if you're if you're doing one at a time or do them on the fold Judith says she uses baking parchment for tracing applique yeah it's perfect is it out yeah I don't think I would use it for applique it's a little bit flimsy it depends what you're doing with it I wouldn't be able to do any folding over it but definitely for this it works a treat well judith uses it for tracing applique okay well there's no right or wrong way my love only the way that works for you christine says would you be able to machine sew the pieces of paper together if the tape keeps coming off i doubt it i if you did really big stitches maybe but i don't know how secure that would be even i think the the, the um, tape i mean it is worked really well you just have to be a bit delicate with them that's all and some of the pieces like this one like, that has no drawings i just used a piece of paper that's the back half of the back <laughs> joanne and mum maureen are watching oh hi john hi mum maureen that's right so this is the front so this is what i've been working on um, so I have got that this will be, so all I have done is I've taken my panels from my meter of fabric and cut them just with a pair of scissors 
all the way around the squares. So I can show you what those look like. So I've got some packs here. <laughs> Jeanette says, sorry to be late. Hope you're all well. Oh, Where's the drink? The drink <laughs> is right there. It's right here. Yep. We got it. Don't worry. Uh, Jackie says, if you sew paper, you need to change your needle. Oh, yes, because it will make it dull. So, yeah, use an old needle or make sure you change it before you start sewing fabric. Link's discovered. Link and Monty were helping me actually trace it out earlier. Well, it, would. it, it, makes, the, it makes the noise. He likes the crinkly noise. Oi! Behave yourself. So these are the panels that I got from my fabric that I just cut out. And what I did, because you get a couple of, I think you get, yeah, you get just about a couple of each panel from the meter. I've just sort of mixed them up into packs. So I've got six panels per, per pack. Might not need quite that many on the back, we'll see. Oh, don't forget that, those ones. So that I've mixed and matched. I don't have the same panels on the same piece, if that makes sense. So they're evenly distributed throughout the coat. Cheryl is watching. Oh, hi Cheryl. And where's my, oh, there's this one. There should be another one somewhere. Christina is watching. Oh, hi Christina. Oh, Cheryl. You Somebody's probably sitting on it. But I've got two panels that fit quite well to the pocket piece, which is right here. So I actually made my pocket piece a little bit taller. I've extended it by an inch because, oh, Michael's always using my phone. But I wanted it to be nice and long enough to fit my phone in. And I've got two panels which are exactly the same size. So this one and another one that has birds on it. Link. Tina says um, she got the pattern waiting for her chosen fabric to arrive. Nice. And Sue is watching. Oh, hi, Sue. So I'm going to have to trim this down a little bit to get it to fit. But, and it's not quite as wide as the pocket pattern should be. But I think these are quite big pockets anyway. And it's only, what, maybe half of an inch different. So I'm going to head and go use that. And I've got another one, so the other one, the bird, I've got a pale blue bird one that will fit here. And this is where the pocket goes. So what I've tried to do is make sure that I don't have any panels underneath my pocket. It's going to overlap a little bit of the butterfly, I think, right here. But otherwise, I think it will be about like that. So it doesn't cover up, it doesn't waste my panel fabric basically. Jeanette says it looks lovely. Oh, hi Jeanette. Thank you. So the tricky thing is, so all I've done, laid out my panels where I want them to roughly be, and then what I did was I measured the space in between, and then added a half an inch, obviously, for seam allowance, and roughly cut out a square or rectangle that length. So the same length as the actual panel, and then as wide as I needed. And then I trimmed them up before sewing them together. So it's just a bit of a jigsaw. And everything is, um, what do I want to say? The seams are all lined up except for where I've gone off piece right here, where I tried to be clever and um, put that down. Because, because I wanted that, when I looked at it, it just felt like that panel needed to come down a little bit to break up some of these lines so I will have to fix that and then I've made it big enough so you can see it overlaps the pattern where it needs to, I'll have to fix it. I think it goes that way Diamond says wow Emma a ruler that hasn't had surgery <laughs> no and this one's quite old now actually I've had this for quite a while yeah, I think it's because it's, it's square, it's a bit sturdier. <laughs> yeah, the only thing I've added is the, um, yeah. I don't know where my big one is now, actually. It will show up somewhere. Claudia is watching. Oh, hi, Claudia. So that's what I've done for that. And then, if Link will move his blooming bum. Ah, there he is. There's my, Link, see Link was sitting on it. That's, 
that's going to be my pocket for here and it's the same width as this one and the, the, this one's a little bit longer so I'll trim that up or I could just leave it long actually have a, don't have, my pockets don't have to be the same size on both sides actually do I? Uh, Sue says uh, she keeps breaking the corners on her large square. Mm. Link, behave. Right, that's going to be... What side is this? So that is going to be my... Yeah, right-hand side of my coat. And then this, which I've started... <laughs> John Scott is watching and he's, and he's accusing me of scrunching the paper. Ah, hi John. <laughs> no, it's Link. We can blame Link this time. Yeah, I'm trying to get Mikey over, but he won't, you won't be able to come next week because John won't be there. So we'll have to work out a date with John. Oh yeah, I, I will, I'll need a, I'll need a week in advance notice though. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, we'll plan it. So this is going to be my other side, and I worked out because it has to be the reverse it needs to be you need to flip your paper your paper over so you're effectively you want it to match the opposite side Oop, don't want to lose that so i'm working on it it's getting there i've got a few more to add at the bottom and it does overlap, so I might have some bits where I can sneak, me trim it off. Yeah, I've got a few bits where I can trim it off and um, reinsert them somewhere else to reuse them. But the, the two front panels are the biggest um, panels. See that makes sense? The, big, the biggest pieces that you need to fit together. The other ones are a little bit smaller, so you don't have to um, use so much. So it's going to take a while because I haven't even finished. These are all the hexagons that I already had sewn together. I'm just putting them. So yeah, so the flowers were sewn together. I'm just putting them together so that they will fit on the, um, the quilt. Um, Your sir says she could sit and play with that paper all day. Love the sound. <laughs> so can Link. Yeah, you and Link are in the anything, anything crinkly. He's right there. Any chocolate opens. He's right there. And then he, yeah, he likes to play with the wrapper. And I get told off because when we hoover up, we find all lots of little balls of chocolate wrapper. So, what do you want to play? Linda wanted to play, didn't you? Yeah, it's all your fault. Um, the only thing I'll say, if you're doing this, just think about what colours you're going to have along the edges. Because this has got the waterfall, See if I can put these together <clears throat> so it's going to be like that. I'm trying to make it so my edges, when they have a waterfall, that yeah, there's not a panel there, or it's going to look I'm trying to think about what it's going to look like on the collar. Yeah. So it will be that on one side. And then it will be that on the other. Trying to get hold of that lots of time. Yeah, I'm getting quite excited about this actually. I'm really chuffed with where it's coming out. Just gotta fix that. It's a very six doctor coat. Mm, really? That coat was hideous. Are you saying my coat is going to be hideous? No, I'm just saying it's all the multi, all the different colors and yeah, but that coat patterns is hideous. and stuff. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And the person who made it made it hideous on purpose because it's like you couldn't possibly want this coat because it's so hideous and I did it on purpose and it's like, oh no, it's perfect. Anyway, we digress. So let me move these bits out. So what I really want to do next is oh what can i do next <laughs> sarah your sarah says it's going to look amazing jason amazing colors coat <laughs> yes see that's what i think about when i or or um yeah so either jason's coat or dolly parton's coat 
nice things, nice coats, not six doctor coat. So I'm going to put that aside because I'm still working on those. Um, what I think I'll do, because this is the size that needs to be, I'll show you how I've been working out using my pockets and putting those aside. Oh, yes, actually, now's a bit time to do this. So I don't really want to duplicate panels from this bit, so from my right side on my left side. So I need to work out from my panel packs that I've got, which ones would go best for the left side. So in this one, oh, I've got the brown butterflies, so that's the same. That one's not on it. There we go my pin holder Barbara says it she thinks it's going to be beautiful oh, thank you so this one I don't have on here this one I do this one I don't this one I do this one I don't that one I don't that one I don't why are you putting them in the same pile because I these three piles don't have any duplicates oh. so one is going to be for this side and one's going to be on the back the other two are for the back and the sleeve i might have to get a bit more for the sleeve but i don't know yet oh am i missing a pile i think i might be missing a pile looks like there's one. Oh, there's one over there good 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 so this one i do that one i do that one's not on it that one's not on it this one's going to be the pocket that one's on it okay so let's see what's in the last pile it might come down to that. Or oh, switching something out. It's a pink stabby. That one's not in it. That one is, but that's not so obvious. That one's not in it. Ow, oh, that was your favourite. That's not in it. That one is, though. That one's not. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't like that the owls. Not, that one's not. So this is the only one that's the same. So let me see what can I switch it with. This one or this one? Let's see. Should we do a survey? <laughs> well, I also got to make sure that I don't have any duplicates on this one as well. No, that'll be all right. So, oh, I think it'll have to be that one because that one's already on there. So I'm gonna use that. That's decided. There we go. There. Right. Executive decision made. Oh, and then this one is going to be my pocket for this. So. This is how it is. I was going to show you how I laid it out and, and do an example of cutting and maybe sewing and then I'll, yeah, we'll do this bit because I can always show you the layering up next time when I've got one actually done. So that's going to be pocket. Pocket is right here. Ish. It's going to be a bigger pocket. I've got quite a big panel. I might put right there. That's going to be on the prominent side. And the sleeves are going to be right there. This one is. bird, owl, so you can see it's going to be on the front of the coat. Oh, I do like that one though. I just want to make sure this gets in. Oh, that's quite a big one too. Yeah. Put up there. Yeah, send something like that.
now I just need to fill in the gaps. What do you think? Wonder? Yeah. Diamond says, I can't see myself being able to use my crumb blocks unless I stabilize them. Some of these pieces are tiny and I can see it unraveling into a pile mm, of scraps. Yeah. Which is, of course, what they started as. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would... It might be best to use those for a wall hanging or something. That's something that isn't going to be washed a lot. Because my coats do get washed a lot and this is definitely going to get washed a lot. So you definitely want it to be quite stable and secure. Although that would, that does sound really nice. That would be really nice. Right. And there's my fabrics. So. They try and keep them sort of blocky. That's a technical term. So let's see. Judith asks, will you lay them side by side and then take a photo before sawing the second front? Yes. Yes. Definitely. Um, so the first one, it was pretty... The first one was pretty easy just to go with the flow, to be honest with you. Um, and I started from the bottom and worked my way up. Um, let's see what I've got. to go in the middle there. Try to see if I get any bits that will go. I'll tell you what I'll do actually. I will lay this up. Move this temptation out of the way. Hang on. Come on, buddy. There you go. I'm going to pin this onto here because then I won't lose it. That's roughly there. Let me see how big I want that bit. So if I do a bit that is uh, one, two, about three inches by get the right way around and inch up so about eight and a quarter. already cut to the right length so I'm going to do about three inches and a half or just three and a half just to be on the safe side like that do want it to overlap now don't cut like I do please don't pick up my bad habits this is not how you're supposed to cut fabric So 
packaging. Right, that's going to be my first piece. Are you helping Link? Are you supervising? Are you supervising, Pat? So that's going to go on there, just like that. Oops. So if I put that, I think I like that at the bottom. I might add a little strip of something at the bottom of this though, because when I quilt it, it's going to have to overlap a little bit and I don't want to lose too much of that pattern. So, let's see. How's that going to fit on there? It's going to fit there. It's a bit just, so I need something in between the two. So let me do this one first. Mm. Running out of space. That's all right. <laughs> Sue said Link's tail blends in beautifully. The thing that I really like about this is actually it's just basically sewing up squares rectangles there's not any curves to do for this part anyway you just kind of make it up as you go along there yeah I think I'll have a strip in between a narrow strip in between those two it's not dark maybe a strip of this <clears throat> what are you doing Link? do I have a piece already done oh I do look at that mm, it's not going to be long enough there I don't want it to be I want to keep the direction Correct. So let's roughly measure that. So is that about nine inches? I'll probably make it about an inch and an inch and a half long. <clears throat> Watch your tail, Link. What do you do? Uh, rule it the right way. There we go. Nine inches. Inch and a half. Actually, I'm going to move that over a little bit. I have to admit, I have been trying to cut the fabric so that I have the right motif. So I've been trying to cut it so that I don't cut off too many birds and have certain flowers in certain places. So I have been using the dreaded fussy cut hate that word, method to some degree. I just like that pans in the middle, so I want to incorporate that. Mm. 
Claudia West, hope your application to sewing bee is in. Oh, <laughs> um, ow, ow. I don't know if I can, to be honest with you. Because it's supposed to be amateurs and technically I do get paid for sewing. So I don't know. But it would be fun, wouldn't it? That would be so much fun. Did he, did he get you? Yeah. <laughs> oh well. Um, let me just grab the iron because I'm going to press that before I see it. There we go. You okay? Joanne says uh, Link found the pressing back. Yes. And Lori said Link, look like, Link looks like he's enjoying his m massage. Mm. to be too precious about which way you press your seams because there's no nesting there's nothing to match up so it's just a matter of really building it up logically so I've got those two together I'm now going to sew this strip along here. There we go. Like that. I'm also going to add something along there, which I might. What colour do I want to add there? That's a, could do a bit of white. Break it up. I've already got some of this on that side, so let me use some of this. And that bit is about seven and a quarter inches, do seven and a half to be safe. There we go. Make sure I don't have any bits from that on the cut yet. There. This one isn't really directional. Let's see. I will cut it like that. Oh, are there any bits that have nice butterflies? Let's see how I do. I want that roughly three inches as well. Three and a half. Couple of butterflies right there. I'm fairly close up. Some more. Everybody's probably saying it's frozen. Oh, getting that brown. It's not quite a square. There we go. And this one. bottom there. So I'm going to sew that onto here. Where's my thing? It's in your sleeve. Oh yeah, that's you. Make sure you take it out because my feet will find it. All the more fun for me. Machine in for me, please, would you? Um, okay. There we go. Oh, 
Oh no, is any any of you watching are doing sewing? I've signed up for the sewing bee. Application bee. I turned it off and I forgot to move it over. And I then I should save it for my needlebrook. Christine says being a professional quilter is different from being a dressmaker. That is true. That is true. Nobody's ever paid me to sew clothes together. Are we talking about the Great British sewing yeah. bee? Oh, that, okay. Yeah. I don't know if I if I do well in the time constraints. And everybody would definitely wince when they see me wielding a rotary cutter. Your brother is watching. Oh, hello, Simon. Karen says, I almost applied a couple of a couple of years ago, but I haven't had enough gin to press oh. send on the application. Oh, <laughs> you should do it. And I would fail miserably on the transformation round. Oh, yes. Yeah, I find that quite hard. I don't know. And yeah, I, I get inspired over certain things, but when they say, here, do something with this, I don't think I'd be able to do it. I have to have my own inspiration, my own ideas. I couldn't just transform something on demand. I'd be horrible. If I can't, if I can't imagine it, I can't imagine it. There we go. I have to admit, my favourite ones of the transformation was one, one that Charlotte Newland did. She did a dress, a really amazing dress. It was a, like a ball gowny from like a parachute type material or something like that. I just remember it being really nice. And then from the last one, was it Claire who won the last one? The robot, well, the futuristic costume, futuristic dress that she did on the transformation. I thought that was amazing. There, so that's gonna be my bottom. Just press this onto here just to make sure because you get you think oh that will work perfectly let me just make sure and then it's like oh that's not actually going to overlap so yeah it does overlap i pull it up let me just jackie says the, t the time constraints trip a lot of people love but i'd love to tell my friends who watch sewing bee that's Emma. She's brilliant. <laughs> and we could have a few Friday trials. We'll send some stuff and you have to make it up. Oh, that's true. And then Claudia says, time constraints are on the Sewing Street show. And as for oh, the rotary true. cuttery, it's just a laugh now <laughs> that, that there aren't more injuries. Yeah, well, yeah. Claudia says you, she thinks you should try. Oh, bless you. I'll have to think about it. If you guys do the application, I might press send. Christine says you are transforming pieces of fabric into a coat and doing a fantastic bless job. You. Oh, bless you. Thank you. The link approves. So I'll press that over. You can see how it's overlapping. No, we can't see. Because there's a cat in the way. You're getting chunky, Link. Well, he's eating Monty's food. Yeah. So if I show you underneath, so 
that's where my pattern is and I'm just doing it so it just overlaps so I'll have plenty because I don't want to lose too much of my nice pattern on the front but I want to make sure that it, there's going to be enough of fabric to work with basically and then I'll just continue working in that vein just adding some contrast using my other side to compare to so that I make sure that I don't put the same colours in the same spots and the only thing that I'll have to work on because I have got some narrow strips and in this one as well is I want to try and keep it fairly the patches fairly chunky so that you can actually they're more obvious than having them too many thin strips so I'm gonna have to try and minimize that and keep the nice big patches and then the other thing that I'm conscious of is I'm planning although I haven't completely decided but so far the plan is to bind it in this color so I'll have binding along the edge and then again all along the seams I'll have that contrast so I'll try and keep minimize how much of that mustard yellow is along the edge so that I've got nice contrast with my binding Colonel Mustard in the library with a candlestick yeah so that's that so hopefully I'll have another piece to show you next week and I will continue working on my hexagons so that next week I can show you how I'm because I have also just completely decided how I'm going to quilt it but I have to layer up did I bring it down I thought I brought it down somewhere Jeanette asks uh, she's wondering whether to invest in a walking foot oh yes definitely do it especially if you're doing any sort of quilting or quilting layers or if you sew any jersey definitely and they shouldn't they shouldn't be overly expensive I think the most I've seen is about 30 pounds depending on the brand um, but yeah they're a godsend there's mine and there's here yeah so definitely and a lot of people actually use these for piecing as well thanks link for piecing as well so what they do if you don't know so there's feed dogs here which mirror the action of the feed dogs underneath the fabric so that basically you've got feed dogs on the top and the bottom pulling your fabrics through so that everything gets um, pulled through nice and evenly um, the only thing i'll say if you do have one and you're finding that it isn't feeding through very well even with the walking foot uh, open up your throat plate on your machine and double check there's no dust bunnies in there because that's why one of the other ways I know I need to clean out a machine is if my walking foot isn't working like it should. That means I've got something clogging up inside that I need to clean out and give it a good thorough clean out. So your Sarah says, OMG, this is going to be amazing. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm quite excited about it because I really love this fabric as well. I'm having fun making sure that I've got lots of butterflies and, and swifts and bits showing so yeah it's fun something different i am quite excited yeah but on that decide how i'm going to quilt it i wanted to do it on, mach on my big machine but yeah i'm not sure how i'll be able to layer them up and keep all my pieces i might we'll see you know what's missing is some star trek fabric in that <sighs> yes dear one day one day you'll have star trek, star trek fabric mm -hmm. okay uh, Joanne says uh, she loves her walking foot. I'm so much more confident with what I stitch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is definitely a must if you're going to do any quilting. Um, oh, and also if you're going to do quilting on your domestic machine, um, use a walking foot and increase your stitch length a little bit to at least three, maybe three and a half. Um, don't use your small stitches like you would normally use to piece together. They need to be a little bit bigger. Um, so that it feeds through better and you don't need them to be as tiny having them a bit bigger but not quite basting but bigger than normal is what you need Sandy says she's loving what you are making looking oh, forward to seeing its progress yeah and Diamond says my machine even with 
my walking foot is not liking me adding my adding my sash, sashing 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 to my temperature quilt strips oh. having to snip down all the corners oh okay um, yeah definitely take your take your stripe plate off uh surely and have a look to make sure there's no dust bunnies especially um in the feed dog tracks that's where i usually find it there's it ends up looking like pieces of felt there's so much dust at least in mine it does so if there's a little tiny pieces of things that look like felt in there get all those cleaned out brush them out hoover it out Shush, suck it out shashing say that fine i can't say that word so, that's sort of like sunday sells she sells at the seashore <laughs> Lori says with my brother machine i have a regular walking foot and super duper one that plugs Ooh. into the computer fitting it's great oh nice fancy and Judy uh, suggests press put Star Trek fabric on the inside of the pocket. <laughs> Jeanette says, thanks, Emma. Had to get the brother engineer out as the machine ate my fabric. Oh, no. And Joanne says uh, she practiced on some small sandwiches first mm -hmm. with walking foot to get a good even size. Yes. And Jeanette says quilt is coming to you. Oh, yay. Yay. Thank you. So yeah, so that's it for tonight. I'll show you again my progress next week and hopefully we'll get to a point where I can I either I either have it quilted, which I can show you, and then show you on the other one how I'm layering it out. Or yeah, we'll mm. see what, what happens next week. Kirsty says, yeah. Thank you. I think that's where I go wrong when quilting. I don't lengthen the stitches enough. Oh yeah, you definitely have to. And do like uh I can't remember the name of the other lady. She said she does little patches. So do little Joanne. patches. Joanne, thank you. Yeah, do a little sandwich, you know, about a six inch square of fabric, um, wadding fabric, and just, you know, have a play around, just practice. Because also the needle you use, the thread you use, the stitch length, it all makes a difference. So, yeah. It's just, Fine. It's just magic. Yeah, no, it's just finding what works on, for you on your machine. Mm magic nah. <laughs> joanne says size three length looks good on, on her machine yeah that's what i tend to use i have to admit yeah okay well thank you thank you for watching thank you for joining us again oh don't forget i'll be on sewing street next thursday um i don't know who is yet probably vix um yeah i've got a couple of Oh, doing some blocks. Oh, I actually have a really nice quilt. I, I sent, I'll be working it over the weekend, so I'll post some pics on Monday or over the weekend uh, of the blocks I'm doing. It's really nice. It's from a pre-cut um, layer cake. It's really nice. So yeah, cheers. Have a good weekend. Stay warm, stay safe, and we'll see you next week. Uh, your Sarah says, "Don't forget the pin in your arm, hun." Yeah. <laughs> My thank, you, thank you, Sarah, yeah. uh, and everyone is saying thank you. Good weekend and all that. Cheers. Bye bye. Good night, all. <laughs>